What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna set up a quick wave simulation using cell fluids. Let's go ahead and just jump into it here. So cell fluids is an add-on that you can get in the Blender Marketplace. And basically what it does is it simulates fluids without actually doing any kind of physics simulation or anything like that. What it means is you're not going to get physically accurate simulations, but you are going to be able to simulate fluids very quickly, like basically in real time in a way that pretty much looks real. So if you do want to check this out, uh, you can get it through the cgessentials.com slash sell fluids. Uh, just note that that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, then I'll receive a commission. But let's jump over into Blender and set this up. And so right now what I have is I just have like a very simple surface in here, right? So nothing special, anything like that. Other than it is important that you kind of model this to like real world dimensions. So if you model something very small, using cell fluid, it's gonna mess up the way that everything renders out. And so like overall, if I measure this, for example, this entire length, it's like 31 feet wide um, by it's probably about 60 or 70 feet long. Um, so just note that if you don't do this to real world dimensions, you're gonna start having problems. So make these, uh, make these setups pretty big. But what I wanna do is I wanna pop over into cell fluids and I wanna create a new fluid. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you align that with the surface that you want to use, right? So I'm just going to align it this way so that it aligns with this object and the whole ground actually fits inside of it. And then I'm going to adjust the length like this so that we're doing something similar, right? So now we've got kind of like this initial setup. I want to go ahead and make this a little bit shorter right here. You do want to make sure that this is overlapping the end so that you don't have fluid kind of falling through the gaps in here. But once we've done this, we're ready to set up an initial fluid. And so the way that we want to do that is we we don't want to set up an inflow and an outflow. An inflow is where water is continuously flowing in and outflow is when it's flowing out. You just want a set amount of fluid. And in this case, we can do that by doing a shift A and adding a cube. And so when I add this cube, what I want to do is I want to size it, right? So I'm going to scale it this way, I'm going to scale it this way. And basically it's going to act as an, like an initial volume of water in here. So this is, this is basically the initial amount of water that you want in your scene. So just set this kind of accordingly, right? So um, what we want to do is we want to create that rectangle and we want to make sure that we've created an initial fluid collection. We want to drag the fluid into the initial fluid collection. And then you can go ahead and you can hide this cube, right? Um, actually, we don't want the fluid in there. We want the cube in the initial fluid. But now, and I'm going to toggle this back on, but if I hit the space key and run this simulation, notice what that's going to do is that's going to simulate basically this amount of fluid kind of like falling into the scene. You can toggle this cube off right here. Now, the problem with this is it's giving me too much water and it's not interacting with my ground. Right? So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you've set up your ground collection, which is just right here. And you just want to take that ground plane object and drag it in here. Notice how now my fluid is only being created up to this point right here with my ground. So now if I run the simulation just by clicking on play, notice how it's just give, basically giving me this like set amount of water in here, which is perfect. It's exactly what we're going for. And what I might do is I might kind of move that cube back a little bit. That's kind of the cool thing about this is you can actually like move this back and it's going to reduce the amount of water in here because less of the cube is actually in the actual area itself, right? So notice how I get a little bit less water in here when I do that like this. And so that's going to be about perfect. And so now what we want to do is we want to set this up where there are waves, right? And so the way that there, the way that waves are going to be created is something needs to act on this fluid. Otherwise it's just going to kind of sit here, right? Like you do get a little bit of movement from when it like initially comes in here, but it's not going to continue. So what you need is you need something that's going to help you create those waves. And in this case, we want to create another cube. So we're going to do a shift A, we're going to add a cube. And in this case, I'm going to scale this along this axis, right? So scale Y out to about here. I'm going to scale it Z to about here. 
right? And so basically what this is going to be is this is going to be an object that acts on the fluid. And let's go ahead and make sure that we apply the rotation and the scale. And so right now, if we run the simulation, this isn't actually going to do anything, right? So if I move it over, notice how it just kind of like falls through the fluid, but it's not actually like changing anything with the fluid. So what we can do is we want to take this object within the fluid setup and we want to make it an effector. And so to make it an effector, what we want to do is we want to create a group or a collection for effectors. And we want to drag that cube into the effector. Now there's one more step that's going to be really important when we do this, and that's going to be once we've got that effector in here, we wanna make sure that we set up the effector modifiers. That's going to basically apply an effector to this object right here, right? So if we look at our cube, now it's gonna have a cell fluids effector modifier applied to it. What that means is that means that now when we move this in our scene, it's actually going to affect the way the fluid acts like this. So notice how when I push this back or pull it forward, it's actually going to affect the fluid that's in here, which is huge because it basically allows us to like live adjust what this is doing, right? So I can set this so that it's moving up and down. I can set it so that it's moving in a circular motion, right? So I could just set it where, um, let's say I just did this. Notice how it's going to simulate kind of the fluid moving right here. Now, obviously you don't wanna push this much of the fluid, but that's okay. We're gonna set up something a little bit different anyway. And so an interesting way that I've seen this done, and this is actually how this is done in the example model, is you can actually set it up where it kind of like rotates and it like slaps the water or places the water in here. And so in order to do that, what I wanna do is I just wanna keyframe the movement and make it cyclical. So in this case, what I wanna do is I want this object to rotate like this, but I need, the, um, I need the point at which it's rotating to move. So all I need to do is just go up to effect only origins and I can do a G and a Z and I can move my origin point of my object up like this and then I can toggle this back off. Notice how now if I rotate this, it's actually rotating based on that higher point right here, right? So if I rotate it this way, um, you can see how it's giving me kind of a better rotation. And we could test this if we wanted to. So R, Y, notice what this is doing is this is pushing on this fluid like this, and it's basically generating those waves. Right, so what we wanna do is we wanna keyframe this as a part of our motion. So um, all we need to do to do that is just down here, actually we can do this up here. We're gonna select this object. I'm gonna type I and I'm gonna insert a keyframe for rotation right here. And so at this point, my rotation is going to be that way. And then let's say 40 frames into this, I want this to have rotated 360 degrees, right? So what I can do is I'm gonna go up into my item settings and I'm gonna set my Y rotation to negative 360, like this. And then I'm going to keyframe it. So I'm just gonna type, so I'm just gonna type I keyframe that rotation right here. So now as this plays, notice how that rotates and this kind of like pushes that water along here. And you could click and drag this keyframe, by the way. So if you wanted this to be a little bit longer, you can click and drag it up to like 60 frames right here, depending on how fast you want this to go. Okay, and so now if I click on play, this is going to rotate one time and generate waves, which is fine, but I want this to rotate more than one time. So what I can do is I can just come down here and I can just select this point right here and I just wanna do a shift E and I wanna look for a make cyclic. We're basically going to create a modifier that's going to make this continually turn like this, right? And notice how as it turns, it's basically creating additional waves in our scene like this. Um, and you can go ahead and you can toggle that off and notice how it's going to work in the scene 
even though we're not actually um, doing anything with it. So um, you could also like this. But this is generally giving us some wave movement in here. Now the only thing that I want to do is I want to add a couple rocks that this is going to kind of like break over, right? So this is like a cell fluids modifier and it can actually um, kind of move around objects in my scene. And so all I want to do to do that is I'm just going to do a shift A and um, you can use the rock generator to generate some rocks that are kind of built in here. So in this case, you can generate one or two and you can just kind of mess with those rocks a little bit. Um, I can't remember, this might be one of the extra objects items in Blender. Um, so you might need to enable extra objects in your, um, you might need to enable extra objects in your uh, add-ons in Blender, but I can go ahead and I can generate just a couple rocks. So we're gonna add another rock right here. And you can just kind of play around with this until you get the rocks that you want. This is probably a little bit too long for what I'm going for, but maybe something like this. I might scale it up a little bit. They're not perfect rocks, but they'll work for what we're doing right here. The problem right now though, is if we run this, it's not actually going to interact with the rocks, right? It's just gonna kind of like move through them as if they're not there. The reason for that is because we haven't set these up to affect the water. And in this case, since they're not gonna move around, all we have to do is just take those rocks and just drag them into our ground like this. This will now use those rocks as a part of the ground. What that means is notice how now this is actually going to hit those rocks and it's going to interact with them. And so now you can see how you've got this simulation in here, which is basically simulating waves running into rocks on your surface. All right, so that's it. That's how you can create a fast, easy scene where you can simulate waves using cell fluids. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. If you do want to check it out, I'll link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.